Hey, welcome back to Dominican Rendezvous. Welcome, welcome once again to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about the Dominican Republic poverty cycle. Now, I am not an economist. By no means am I an economist. However, I know a little bit about economics and I know a little bit about the situation in the Dominican Republic when it comes to, to poverty. And so today, I just wanted to take a few moments to, to share with you some of my thoughts on the circle of poverty in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a wonderful country, but yet it is a country that that struggles with, with poverty due to several what I call circular issues. And let me try to explain what I'm talking about. For example, if you look at the per capita income in the Dominican Republic, you will readily see that it is quite low. Wages are low. We've talked about wages. We talked about minimum wage in the Dominican Republic and other wages in the Dominican Republic, the cost of living in the Dominican Republic. Take a look at some of those videos. But when you look at the per capita of income and you see how low it is, what happens is this. You will notice that when you have a low per capita income, this will also mean you will have lower savings. And when you have lower savings, you have lower purchasing power when there is uh, lower income. Um, and then with lower purchasing, you have low investment. And then you have lack of capital. And with a lack of capital, you have a lack of pro productivity. And so you can see that there is this cycle. It just all starts. And what happens is, is that the people oftentimes, well, most of the time, will remain impoverished and in poverty. Now, added to this, there's a couple of other factors that, that the Dominican Republic has to fight against. And this also kinds of keeps them uh, impoverished and in poverty uh, for the most part. And that is the trade deficit, the trade deficit. And let me try to explain that as, as easily as I can. When you are a net exporter of raw materials, which the Dominican Republic is, and their prices as they're exporting them and they're trying to sell them abroad are relatively low, then when they're trying to import, let's say, finished products that they need at high prices, you can see the unfavorable balance of payments. They're exporting things at a very, very discounted cost, a very, very inexpensive cost, much of the reason why other countries are buying those items, but yet they have to then import finished items uh, for them to be able to purchase and to use in, the, in their country, in the Dominican Republic, and therefore those prices are typically much higher. And so now you have an imbalance of, of payments. And then you look at the infrastructure. To enhance the development of the infrastructure, uh, or I should say, to, to enhance the development of the Dominican Republic, you need proper infrastructure. Many people like to batter the infrastructure of the Dominican Republic. I've seen it on videos. I've seen some other YouTubers just dog the, the, the infrastructure of the Dominican Republic. They want to talk how bad the roads are. Uh, the telecommunication, net, telecommunication networks are bad. Some talk about the sanitation being bad, the health bad, the education's bad, um, the transportation systems are bad. And while there is a certain modicum of truth to all of that, and I don't like to bash the Dominican Republic because it is what it is, they're doing their best, the government, as we all would agree, needs to spend more to help out this situation. But the government needs more funds to be able to, to do this. Now, part of that is there's a lot of corruption in government. We've talked about that on this channel. And a lot of uh, money just goes disappearing and missing. And the money is not being spent wisely. I get that. But then on the other hand, when your tax base is low, the government doesn't get enough revenue to put back into the government or back into the infrastructure of the country. And then lastly, uh, added to this, I would say, would be the brain drain. I talked about that on a recent video not long ago, the brain drain. Uh, people who are educated, people who do have money, um, oftentimes may choose not to stay in the Dominican Republic, may look for greener pastures. Uh, the push-pull factors that we, we've talked about, maybe it's the corruption uh, pushing them out. Perhaps it's you know the bad government that they feel um, may exist in the, the Dominican Republic. To others, it could be crime. Uh, it could just be, you know, bad uh, governmental administration, bad planning uh, of, of things that are going on in the Dominican Republic, um, education, the bureaucracy. Those are some of the things that push people out, people who have the brain to and the, the intellect and the resources, if you will, to help build the Dominican Republic. And so this keeps the Dominican Republic sort of in a state of of, of 
unending poverty, if you will. And, and, and that's how I look at it, the, the, the poverty cycle. And again, none of this is meant to disparage the Dominican Republic. You know I'm very, very pro-Dominican Republic uh, and will continue to be. But yet I do want to try to help you understand what you're seeing when you see poverty, when you see the bad infrastructure, uh, when you see people who are, are, are hustling on the streets and what makes them uh, to have to do what they have to do to make a living. And I just hope that this gives you a little bit more insight to the reality of the situation. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.